Wolf, where were you raised? Aberdeen, Mississippi, Monroe County. That's uh, about 150 miles from Memphis, Tennessee, south. Is that down the Delta? Oh, it's in Mississippi in the hill, well, to say the prairies. Mm -hmm. um, who were some of the people that you heard when you were a kid, you know? Blind Lemon Mississippi. Jefferson. Did he, did he, did he come, come through there? Did he? Oh, he come through there, but I didn't get to say nothing the to him. I just seen him on the bandstand, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was... Charlie Patton, blues singer, around Rules, Mississippi. And that's in Sunflower County, Sunflower County. And uh, I listened to Lonnie Johnson and uh, Mama Rainey and also uh, Tampa Red. And, but Lemon Jefferson was my favorite guitar player because he could play notes clear, and I liked the clear notes you know, mm -hmm. on the guitar, you know. Yeah, he would pick them. Yeah, he picked them more clearly, you know, and you could understand you know, what he was doing, you know. Did you, did you see Charlie Patton and them guys in, in them beer joints in the neighborhood joints? Or? Well, you see, we wasn't no beer joints at that time. It was country. Houses, you know, what they Roadhouse? No, just country houses, you know, on the plantation, you know. Each and one would get play for him every for Saturday night, Sunday night. And I would follow him around and try to get him to learn me, you know. So Charlie started me out picking a guitar, Charlie Patton. Sonny boy, Rice Miller, he started me out there blowing a harmonica. How old were you when you started? You play beautiful harp. Well, I reckon I was about, I say, I was about 17 when I started blowing a harp. Did you play really actively when you were young, or did you just kind of play around the other No, I played around on the plantation, you know, because I was kind of shy, you know. I had never seen anything. And at least anybody come along, all of boo, I was ready to run, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start on the guitar? Oh, I started 1928, the 15th day of January. Okay. The guitar. See, I, I quit about five years playing guitar once, and I quit again in World War II in 41, the 8th April, April, April in 41. Did you serve? Yeah, I spent five years in the service, and I lost, well, I lost ten years of me and my music, you know. I bet that was really rough, being in the service, you probably don't get a chance to play much. Later. No, 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 that didn't never happen. Then I was back home about, I was back home about three or four years more before I decided I really wanted to play, you know. So I picked it up again. Who did you listen to in the electric guitarist when you started? Electric guitars. Oh well, the first one I got saw was in Susan Roebuck uh, books catalogs, you know. And uh, fact of it is, I think I was the first one ever brought electric guitar through the through the uh, uh, Arkansas side, you know, because all the rest of the people had those ordinary guitars, you know. Did you get around to hear people in other towns very much at all when you were living down there? No, no. You just were pretty much on No, the because I was, I was a, a day hand, you know. I laid around on the farms, you know. Where was it, near near, near Helena? Where? No, this is... Uh, back in the 30s. Maybe. No, uh, I was between uh, West Memphis and uh, uh, Forest City, Arkansas. See, because we stayed in a place they call Park in Arkansas, P-A-R-K-I-N. Right, I know where that is. Did you, did you, did, did you work as a, as a one-man band ever? Did you go out yes, and sing? Yes, yeah, I went out in the street and sung as a one-man band. I had my harp around my neck like Jimmy Reed, you know. And uh, I had me a, some kind of horn on my knee, you know. 
had my guitar, you know. When, when did you first move up north? Oh, I came up here uh, in 52. And you, you worked at a radio station planner? Yes, in West Memphis. I was a, a planner's disc jockey, you know, speak about there. Uh, Oh, plow tools and cows and uh, grain and really? stuff yeah. like that, you know. Uh, it wasn't like the big station over in Memphis, you know. They spoke about a lot of merchandise, but I spoke about a lot of plow tools. And, like a rural station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, for the real people, I spoke about the plow tools and the, and the hay and the corn and, and stuff. And so I come to be good, and then the people wanted me to take in some of the... Uh, the shopping yeah. broadcast, you know. Did you ever run into Walter Horton when you were there, the harp man, Big Walter? Walter Horton? Yeah, played harp. So I know. Did you shake your head, Walter? Yeah. Yeah, I know Walter Horton. Um, mm -hmm. What about Memphis Minute, Walter? Oh, she's, she was in Memphis. I don't know, I heard it now that she had a stroke in the lived a while and died now. I, I, no, she's still alive. She's still living yeah. in Memphis, yeah. But I heard she had a stroke. Yeah, she, yeah, she I was wondering, uh, when you got your name of Howling Wolf, did you ever hear the old Howling Wolf on the Vocalion records? You know, a long time ago there was another Howling Wolf. He couldn't really sing like you do, but, but he called himself. You know, he made a Howling Wolf blues. Oh, yes, I've heard of him. That is good, though. <laughs> but I mean, you, did you, did you kind of get your idea from that or No, no, I got, my grandfather gave me the idea. Oh, right? See, because they used to tell me stories about the wolves and the animals and the forest thing. Mm. The way they told it, I thought the wolf was about the baddest one out there, you know. <laughs> so, I'd, I'd keep up a lot of devilment they'd say, I'm going to put that wolf on you, he'll be here directly, you know. Every night when I get ready to go to sleep, I'd worry him to tell me this story about the wolf, you know. So they just kept a calling me wolf and then to make me mad, you know what I mean? You know, uh, there's so little known about Rice Miller, you know, the sunny boy that was over in Europe with us. Did you know him when he was a younger man? Or mm -hmm. What was his real name? Then? Yes, Rice Miller. They call him Rice Miller. Rice Miller. Where was he from? Do you know? Yes. Yeah, that was the St. Louis Special. Well, no, that was a different area. Yeah. They came from a different section. They came from the Carolinas. Well, no, that was a, that was the St. Louis Special. St. Louis Special. Uh, Brown, Brown, uh, he raised up Brown. I come in, but I met him at uh, a place called Sunnyside, Mississippi. And Slaughter, Mississippi, and uh, Green Woods, Mississippi. We come to be friends, and uh, I take him home with me, and he saw my sister. He married my sister in forty something in the forties, you know. What was what was her her name? Uh, Maggie. Oh, Maggie. Did, did John. He, he sings. Did, does he sing about her in one song? He does about the West. No, Memphis no, he don't. He don't sing about her. You see. And so him and her got on bad terms some kind of way, and and uh, he left because I didn't think he wanted to work, you know. Was he what, was he already blowing harp? Then? Yes, he was blowing harp. He was blowing harp, then left, come to hell, and got on Kang Biscuit time, mm -hmm. and uh, they put him over big over there, and so he got to the place he got good in some kind of way and they messed up over there and he had to leave there by night. They, they'd taken him away in a ambulance, you know. <laughs> Sonny Boy was a rough boy in his lifetime. You know, some people, they, they quickly get carried away with the life, you know. Just like some of the young musicians today, they got a big head still having a big heart. <laughs> Do you remember a man named Charles Lloyd, one of your groups who played saxophone? Charles Lloyd? Yeah, tall guy. Mm -hmm. Tall fellow. Yeah. No. No, I didn't know him. So you know him? 
know what son of boy is real popular man with? Is he the altar killer or the boy? Well, yeah, you know, I'm just guys, like... You know the XGI club over there? He owned that man. Who? He owned it. Sonny Boy. Is that what Sonny Light's name is? Yeah. Uh, do you remember, you know, the, the other Sonny Boy who recorded for the Bluebird Company? You know, oh, yeah, Sonny Boy William. Yeah, well, uh, which one do you think got the name first? The one who got killed. You mean the, the, the one who made a Bluebird record? For yeah. The, the war See, the this Rice Miller, he tried to use his name in the South. And I think Sonny Boy put a little pressure on him and he had to change it to Little Boy Blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was on uh, Helmer Broadcast Station as Little Boy Blue. Because Sonny Boy, before he died, he put a pressure on him about using this name, you know, down south, you know. Because it mixed up a lot of people. When did you put your first band together? My first band? Oh, I put my first band together in 48. Who did you have in it? Do you remember? I had Willie Johnson and uh, going to guitar and I had Ike Turner. Ike Turner? Ike Turner used probably. to be my pianist player. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's good. And I had another I had a drummer called Willie Steeles. And that's all we had, piano, guitar, and bass, I mean drum, and, and harp. When did you start working with horns? Well, after I come, after I come to be pretty good, I use a lot of horns around Memphis, different ones. But something though, you can't keep them horns, you know. And so I decided I wouldn't do with any more horns, you know. They'll stay with your choir, and then they get the big ideas and take off. Them horns want to play jazz, you know, and I see that jazz won't fit what I'm doing. Yeah, right. I'm up there playing for life and death on Smokestack Light, and he's playing Who Papa Doc. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. Well, you, you, you know the uh, uh, the best man that play after hours, but it's the only next man is I tell you. Used to play for you. Yeah, I tell you used to play for me. I tell us good on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know him before he started playing guitar. What did he do? Do you know his wife? Tina. Yeah. yeah. She's a knockout. Yeah, I went to school. Did you really? What do you think about all these kids doing your songs like uh, Spoonful? I've been hearing. This. Well, I tell you, there's nothing wrong with that. See, when they. I, mean, I want all of them to make my records because I get some money out of it, see. Have you ever heard any of the younger groups that you liked? Oh yeah, I heard a lot of them. Yeah, who, who were some of them that you liked? Well, I like the Rolling Stones, the Neil Skinners, and I like these boys that's playing in here tonight very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you always a little rascal? No. I don't know too much about the peoples down here, you know. They're East Road, they're Go get they're some more. You see that? It doesn't matter no different who sang your song. You sang, they sang the cause the way they feel. Don't never take and try to change the musician when he does something. Let him play the cause the way he feel. And just like in a conversation with a bunch of people, you talk the way they talk. Don't try to change nothing. Because everything is did, somebody had the background to it. You been a record you put out, Louise? Yeah. Oh. Where? Jimmy Rogers. Oh, yeah, the old, the old Jimmy Rogers? Mm -hmm. wow. He used to say, Oodle Lady, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I dropped mine's a little different from him. That's See? Right. See, he was, See that, he was really well known. All that was my friend. Did you, did you meet him? Oh, yeah, I've been with him a lot of times. Is that right? Oh, that's what sort of shows did you play with him? I didn't play no shows, oh, you know. You, you know, he just Jimmy come Rogers. he just come down through the through the prayers, you know. Oh. He had different friends down through there. Oh. And uh, on some of those plantations, you know, he had some friends. While he'd be down there, he just taking up with me, you know. They say I 
<laughs> seemed like I had good sound sense. I was a good boy, you know. <laughs> so when I'd sit down, he'd be out there on the porch playing to the white, you know, people. Then when he get through playing with the white people, he said, you seem like you're innocent in this. I said, I am. So he'd sit down and yodel to me, you know. <laughs> You two so, were making history, okay? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So he'd sit down and yodel to me, and then I'd get out in the field and I'd yodel. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't yodel just like him. I brought mine down more different, you know. Well, I mean, it was just, just a matter of that Spoonful being a kind of a dirty song, wasn't it, to begin with? Yeah, it was a dirty song. Kind of like the Dirty Dozen? Yeah. But you see, I really didn't want to sing it, but they, they insist, you know. What about the Red Roof? You know, that's you. Well, that was come from Charlie Patton, you know. That was his title. But I just... Hand it around a little bit. When did you first meet Hubert, your guitar player? Uh, I met him in Hughes, Arkansas. You came yeah. to Chicago with you? you yeah, I, I paid his way. What, did, what kind of hit you when you first went to Europe? Remember when all these kids went crazy for Did you ever experience that before here? No, I had never experienced it before. I don't know who gave me that chance, but I sure appreciate it. It was right down my alley. I, I wondered who gave me that chance. That show was good for me. I really appreciate it. Then I got a chance to play with the Mule Skinner and Chris Barber. And then I got a chance to go behind them. Iron Curtain, East Berlin, and Poland. I got a chance to go to Geneva. What was it like to play in East Germany? All oh, those people eat that stuff up. They really did. Yeah. Did you ever? I was to play just one night, but I ended up with about three or four nights there. I didn't know. I think you right. didn't. And you, and you and you also went went to Warsaw, didn't you? I went to Warsaw. And had they ever heard anything quite like that? No. <laughs> yeah, I bet they had. And, uh, Did you hear any music over there that you? Yeah, the first night we got over there, we went to the auditorium. They had a, a white band playing. They wasn't gonna give us but about 15 minutes, but when we got in there and put this stuff down, <laughs> they, they moved the white band out. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, well, what about this song that you wrote, "Shake for Me"? Now, how, how did you uh, originally that? I don't know. I, I just. Mean, Whenever I give me a couple of drinks, I, all my stuff come to me. Yeah. No, yeah. I never. See, he'll tell you, you never saw me wasted. You know, I'll take a few drinks. But, yeah, well, uh, well, see, I know that uh, in St. Louis, that shake for me, that was number one for one month. Yeah. Well, hello. Well, I wouldn't try to change nobody's palate. Well, they'll, they'll yeah, change yeah, it. They're, yeah. they're they'll go along with anything you want. I know, but I wouldn't do that. I, I'd rather try to do the job, you know, but I, I'm pulling hey, on that light, no, you know, that light is bad, it gets my eyes. A grandma? My eyes never been no good, we'll, you know, we'll since I... We'll, yeah, because Bill Graham, the guy that owns the place, is really happy to do it. Because yeah. the music is what's supposed to be there, yeah. all the stuff is just... Yeah, you're the main right. attraction. I'll, I'll talk to him right away. I'll well, want, got, you know, not, not just that man, one of that man, like, right down on me. You know, if you turn it a little bit away from my face, you know. Yeah, yeah. Some kind of way. I heard you were really coming on. I just got here. But you were coming on tonight. Yeah. You feel good? <laughs> you, you know what kind of shit would be you in St. Louis. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. You gonna rival your St. Louis shows here? Oh, I'm gonna do some of them, yeah. yeah. I, I want you to put on one of them Lakeside shows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do them things rough unless I got some competition. <laughs> well, I want you to show the people, you know, when you... See, I'm something else when I got somebody to fight you, against. When you was bad the blues with Ike I'm not bragging, but I'm, I'm out of sight when I got somebody to well, fight against. You. you know, whenever you get, get up to a place, you be bad the blues with Ike Town or Mother Water or somebody like that, see who come out on top? 
I want you to put on one of them shows tonight. <laughs> Well, like you said, you ain't got no competition. I know competition. <laughs> just, just pretend you got some competition. Oh, what would we do to make you a match? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll moan a little. No, I'll do that, but you didn't steal a, you know, I have to have competition if you want me to dig the stuff. You know that song you put a howling for my darling? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. And you yeah. come to St. Louis and shout everybody down there, ain't that? They was uh, going for competition and who was the best? Well, you, you see, I leave it to the people because when I, I'm kind of like the song, I'm the wolf. When I drop my tail on the ground and swipe out my tracks, no other wolf can go long now. Yeah, see, see, uh, <laughs> see, see, just like the old Lil Milton. Lil Milton was out there. Lil Milton, uh. See these uh, young these young cats don't <laughs> fool with the old man, you know, they all respects me. You remember Lil Milton then you That's right. He, he was out here, man. He didn't do nothing. Now. That's right. You take all these singers out here, you respect me, you might ask me, how, how you like the wolf? Oh, I don't like him, yeah. Well, I know how come you don't like him. It's a competition when you get to food with me. Did you ever play with B.B. King? Yeah, wonderful guy. Yeah. Got nice personality. B.B. just, just left uh, about four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a nice person. Yeah. When did the Bahari brothers first hear you when they cut those records? Who? You know, uh, come out from Beverly Hills. The fellow came out from. They they came there. Uh, see, all this stuff was done through by Ike Turner. He was oh, he quick thinker. And he uh, he yeah. had a lot of irons and connections. Well, you see, what happened? Or uh, Ike had me to cut this record for RPM first, riding in the moonlight, the same sound that Junior Parker sang about old oh, baby. Come on. That was my title, you know. I just didn't give him no trouble about it, you know. And uh, he gave that record to RPM. And then he turned around and cut one with Sun Label. And at that time, Sun Label was was in with Chess. Chess was back and Sun Label up this guy in Memphis. Yeah, they were by the masters from him. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and so, where did you record those first things? Were they in a in a in a garage or? No, in in, in Memphis. Oh, was the studio there? Yeah. See, at, on our on a Sun label. Yeah, both of them. Got mm -hmm. Got everything here. You know what about yeah. smoke? Yeah, I don't smoke track light. Yeah, that's cool. And an old uh, record you had. I'll fix it up. I know. See, after that, I um uh. uh they put both of them records out together and they was budding one another, you know. So Chess, he beat RPM to me, you know, and put me on the contract. And I actually bought the contract from RPM, you know. You know, you know, a lot of people like that song called Dust in My Brew, but I bet you half these kids don't know what it means. I remember you told me once in Europe, we want mm. to tell them what that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Elmo James singing that one. Yeah, we all used to play and sing together. Mm -hmm. Elmo could play my numbers, I could play his. I can play all them cats numbers. <laughs> what, what are they talking about when they mm -hmm. talk about that smoke? Get up in the morning if the woman don't do right and find me another place to go. Go ahead, boy. <laughs> you ain't gonna what treat me right. I'll just give you my house and you just take who's the you in love with and live there and leave me alone, you know. Right. So that's what I mean by I get up in the morning and dust my broom. Well, well tell me, well, this, you remember when Elmo put out this song uh, right before uh, he passed away, The Skies Cry? Mm -hmm. What did he mean by that? Well, man, nothing about it. That's the way he felt. It's just the way he felt. Mm -hmm. well, people don't mean nothing about the song they sang, but just the way if they play music and they want to sing. First thing come to their mind, that's what they say. Are you living in Chicago now? Hmm? Are you living in Chicago now? Is that your home? Well, I done bought a home now. I paid twenty-three thousand dollars for it. Wow. Modern style. But uh, I might just give it to my daughter. Really? Are you gonna move back? To... I'm gonna go where I can fish and hunt and run rabbits. Yeah. Right. That, that yeah. sort of stays with you when you're born and raised in the country. Yeah. I think so. I think it stays with yeah. you. Yeah, I like to be where I can hunt, fish, run rabbits, 
Coons, Wildcats, Bobcats, anything. <laughs> you seem pretty easy going, although you, like you don't on stage so much. You're all energy there, but. Do you, do, you, do you think part of that is because that music comes to you natural? You know, you were born and raised with it kind of? Well, I was born and raised with these things, ups and downs, see. Ups and downs been with every man, every woman in life. See, the people all about the blues. The blues is nothing but, uh, if you're dissatisfied and you don't have no thing, you don't have the things you want, you have no money, no place to stay, and you're loafing and going from place to place. You're looking for something and you don't know what it is until you find it, you know, uh, conditions. Yeah. You see a lot of people walking the road, they got conditions. White or Negro, they got conditions. So that's, that's what the blues come from. See, the blues is the thing that make you Sang them. You sang the way you feel. If you've been misled, you sang it that way. Just like, just like some cowboys on the range. He sang the way he feel. If he said, a little doggy, a little doggy, that's the way he feel. He feel like he's a little doggy. That's the way he feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. You sang the way you feel. Some people, Sang, but they're gonna put no uh, touch into it. I think a lot of group singers, a lot of musicians, they sang, but they don't put no touch to it. And if you're gonna go out there, you got to put some touch to it. If you don't put no touch to it, you just gonna stay at home. You know what I mean? No, it ain't out. Uh, you remember the song that you, you sung with Shindig right before you went to Europe? Uh, mm -hmm. What's the name of that song? It's an old song. In the words, I mixed them up. I, I, I like this song. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good, got a good taste to it. Yeah, you gotta see, work on it. You see, you got that from Sunday Boy. Part of it. The original Sunday Boy. Yeah. I mean, uh, <coughs> actually, when you, before you went to uh, uh, England, you put, that, that was the song that you put on that good show on Shindig before Shindig went off. You know, well, I wanted to put on something else, but everybody inquired. For me to sing that. So. Well, I enjoyed it. You singing that. You see, y'all. Uh, and doing things, you have to do as you was told. You don't do what you think you should do. See, if they want you to do something, they tell you what they want you to do. That if you want your money. See, and I'm a man do things people tell me to do. I don't do what I want to do. I'll tell you why I said. You do as you was told. That's why I made it as far as I am today, because I, I do as I was told. They tell me something, I don't try to tell them nothing, because they're paying me, I'm going to do as they say they right. You don't get the big head. Right. You get a great big head, excuse me. Don't let nobody tell you nothing, you know more than anybody else. They're going to knock the props out of money, you're going to come on back down. I mean, well, Get the, uh, you know, listening to what they used to wind them old record players up. Victor, my, my father had the Wolf Records, you know. Mm. Yes, I write some, and then I buy some from different people. Yeah. If, yeah, yeah, if yeah. there's any meanings to the I mean, the words. Now, what, 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 what is? Uh, what you is get a writer's uh, potion. What is, what the Dixon is? He still writing a lot of music. Yes, he's writing a lot of music. He's uh, Dixon, a very nice person. Mm -hmm. But as far as I'm concerned, to my opinion, from now on out, I'll do them myself because I, some some things that give me, I, I just don't don't like them. For now, he's a nice person, but. Stuff he trying to dish out to me now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even try to say it because it don't have no meanings to it, as far as I'm concerned. Did you ever meet Tommy Johnson? 
No. Like I felt the big road blues and all that. No, I, I met Lonnie like Johnson. And, oh. You know, they meet Tommy Johnson. How about Robert Johnson? Oh, I met him. We all just run around together. I bet everybody uh, has to. Uh, hey Wolf, right. have you have have you heard of this this jockey out here who calls himself the Wolfman Jack? He tries to sound like you. <laughs> no, I haven't heard of him. You ever heard of him? He, he, uh, said this, he sound like you and Mom Mabel. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Except he's white. Yeah. He's no, he's very not for sure. Yeah, he is. Yes, Boy, yes. It's a big company. Yeah. He's down in L.A. Uh, Say, what about those? Who's, who's, that's, your, who's uh, your drummer? That's him, Castell, named after the man overseas. Castro. Wolf, I would just get the names of the guys in the band again. I'm gonna make sure we have it on now. Yeah. But the bass player is named Andrew McMahon. His home is in Louisiana, Del High, Louisiana. That's Cass Hill Burrow. His home is in Memphis, Tennessee. Drummer. And the pianist. William Abel, his home is in Memphis, Tennessee. And Hubert Sumlin, lead guitar player. I don't get down to LA too He's born and raised around Greenwood, Mississippi. I come in the sector session of him at uh, Hughes, Arkansas. And 52. How long has Willie been playing with you? We've been on it now about a little bit on too much. I want to get him on some. I want, I want to get him on some good records. He's got a whole lot of talents. Are you planning to do a session pretty soon? Yes, yeah, I can find somebody to give him the right to see you. Somebody said Chess was going to make an album at the Fillmore Auditorium today. Huh? Did the uh, old man Chess make a record of you at the Fillmore Auditorium here? Somebody no. said, oh. I, ain't, I don't know nothing about that. Oh, you don't? <laughs> I don't know about that, you know. I ain't even saw nobody from that. Of course, they may have it done, you know what I mean. They may have this guy to do it, you know, and send him the, the tape. Where do you usually record when you make the Chicago? Yeah, we got a place. Is this the Chess Studios? Is that a pretty good place to work? Yes. They treat me all right. You know, anybody you work for, they're going to take a little from you. Yeah. And you ain't never seen nobody start nothing that you're getting. If you stand, you're going to get cut. If you break and go to running, they're going to shoot you. So I've been with them so long ago. But I, you know, I get what I want. What's the name of the song? If I want me five, six thousand dollars, I'll go down there and get it. You know, they don't talk no back talk to me. What's the name of the song? I don't Saturday? try to be bad about it. I just go down there and ask them for some money. Oh, she got it. On the other side, Louise, what are you saying? Say, I'm going down. And me and Muddy Water in now. A uh, little wall made the man, you know. Yeah, that's true. We started we'll, off with that. We'll be with him when the deal's gone. Uh, did, did you as long ever, as we want to. Did you ever work with Little Walter? I worked with him once or twice when he first was hot. Yeah. In Memphis, Tennessee. And I worked with him last year. Excuse me, up in uh, Milwaukee. But he never showed up. Was there. He never came. <laughs> he did come. Right about five minutes before the whole thing was over. He did. He, he did come. <laughs> but you see, uh, Walter, Walter drank so much of this year, yeah, till it just make him late. You know, I don't know why he drank so much of this year. Cause I drank some of it too, but I'd never be late. Yeah, he was real. I know. I know Walter put on some good shows at Bowden Oak Road. Oh, you're wonderful. Yeah. If you can get him to do it. Can he still play? You know, the last show you put on. Well, I have a hood wall to play now in about two years. Well, about since last year. Well, you're year about two years. Has he ever worked with Muddy in the last five, ten years? Yes, he worked with Muddy. Fact of the matter is, that's who he should go back to Muddy. Do you think he'd ever do it? Well, I, that's effort of me. I'd go back and get my old band that I got, I had when I first started out. Can you, you 
he'd still be, if he could, he'd still be Muddy Water again. But these young cats they got now, they play too fast for that old man, you understand? It's just, it's a shame, you know. He, maybe he would like to put together his old man. Well, you know, I'll tell you. People, some people get carried away. They won't stick with one another. They ain't got shit nothing, though they can make some money with one another. But after a while, they, they go to looking over this way and looking that way, and then he finally, he think he better than he is. He think he better than he is, and soon later the band gone, he won't. And then ain't nobody making no money. Everybody loafing them. He once had a good band, but somehow or another, something got amongst them and broke up. Did you ever hear Charlie Patton do that? When he was... No. I hear them do Little Red Rooster, Pony Blues, Backwater Rising, and uh, Spoonful. What about down in the bottom? Little Red Rooster thing like that. You know you sunk down in the bottom, now what about that? What about it? I don't know what about it. That was a good song. Who's been talking? Who's been talking? Yeah. Well, I made that one, that's one of mine. Yeah, that's true. Who been telling everything I do? Somebody running my business. <laughs> when you were still, you know, playing in the streets as a kind of one man, did you ever make up songs about people in the town? Or? No, you know, I just only song. Did you ever hear songs like that? Yes, I've heard songs like that, but I never make up songs like that. I always make up songs about the way people live and how people act amongst themselves, you know. Ups and downs they have, you know. Some people, you know, have ups and downs. Can you and what caused these things, you see. You know, a lot of people just come out and sing, but they don't never put the, the sweetening to it. You got to tell the people why you're singing this and, and what causing this and show them that what you're singing. A lot of people just get up to the mic, go to sing and rabbit on the log. Well, rabbit on the log, what did it do on the log? After it started up on the log, you know. You know, you got to make your story clear to the people if you want to hand it to them. See this up there, a oh, baby, 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 everybody can say baby. <laughs> I can say baby anytime I get ready, I go home and call my wife, baby. Come here, baby. <laughs> you got to make a story now and make it stick. You got to tell people just like it is, how, how things go. And you got to make everything, every word taller, every word fits. You don't remember any of those songs that they sang about somebody in the, in the town? No, I don't know nothing about them songs they were singing somebody in the town. Cause it's always in somebody in the town. Who is in the town? Somebody's in there, well who is in the town? You see, after you say somebody in town, you gotta tell why they're there in the town. And what caused them to be there in the town. And why did this come from to make this person come to town? You can start a theory, but if you can't master your, your words, well, you just forget it. Because you ain't got no, uh, you have no nothing there for you to to back up on. To make no background, make no sense to it. You sang songs today, you gotta have some sense to it. A touch off, just like I do that. See, when I do that, some gas in that house has been gone, boom. That's a touch off. You gotta have some touch off in this stuff. See, well, another song going. I love it. I'm going. When I get back to the airport, excuse me. When I get back to the airport Monday, I'll spend about five hours with my wife and kids. I'll leave out Monday morning early. My first day to be in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's wow. the 26. Where do you where do you play that? Do you, do you play across the river in one of those big dance halls? I don't know. I've never been there in Baton Rouge to 
play before. And I'm going to leave Baton Rouge and I'm coming back to Memphis the next night. And the next night I go to Columbus, Georgia. Wow, really and the next night I go to Tallahatchie, Florida. And you're going back. And the next night, I, and the next night I'll be in uh, Harlingdale, Florida. Then I come out going home. I got about five days or six days out there in the last month this week. And this last of this month. Do you work? Do you work most of the year around? All the time. I work seven nights a week. I've been doing it ever since uh, '53. Uh, now, what book and agent? Uh, book Associate. 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 Same people's book, Armstrong books me, associate. Well, a lot of people call it New York Attraction, but it's associate, but I was ABC. Looking, I was looking for you to go to Jazz Workshop. Mm. Where do you like working uh, best in the places? Anywhere. Like I don't best? have no picking and tune. Anywhere they want me to sing, spoonful, spoonful, <laughs> I'm right there, don't worry about that. <laughs> No, I don't go around picking no place to play. I go around and play what the people want me to play. I let the people handle me. I don't tell the people what to do. You know the best place I like to hear you sing at? What? That's good and easy. I go anywhere they want me to. If they want me on the island, I tell If they got a boat where I can get out there, I'll be out there. I like that you sing at the moonlight because it looks like you uh, just bring everything out there. That's all right. Go. You let the peoples carry you. Cause they made you. You got a lot of fans. Thank you. I always let the peoples carry me because they made me. I got time to talk with them. I don't never. I was born on Earth and I stay on Earth. I don't never get up. When I when I go up in space, you see, I'm gonna get me a Sputnik and I ain't gonna talk to nobody <laughs> then. Cause oh. <laughs> Be in space. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as I'm on Earth, I'll be with my people. But as soon as they take me to space, I won't talk to you no more. Because I'm way up y'all and you were there down here. Do you get more fired up in front of a Negro audience than you do in front of a white? Do you think get, you get more what? more fired up kind of do you, do you, do you get more well, fired get, up? Well I get fired up anywhere that I play. I don't I don't I don't I, I don't get shame of nobody. Because, <laughs> but I don't, because I've, I've frankly been in, when I started to play, and I started with a bunch of white boys, you know what I mean? And uh, they liked it, the blues, and I liked it, the blues, and we'd make whiskey, and the police would run us all through the world. <laughs> Making that good cold, though. Yeah, I'd be cooking, and they'd be flicking the box, and... <laughs> They get tired of picking the box, I'd pick and they cook a while. Maybe it wasn't why I would take one of them cups and stick under that spout. <laughs> yeah, all the people I all the people that I really have dealt with. Yes. Well, was a bunch of bad white boys, you know. They was bad and I was bad, you know. And, uh, <laughs> And we stayed in them, and when they put them in jail, put me in jail, they put them in jail too. Because we just, just was together. We was a bunch of rats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they, you know, and they, uh, they all held up for me. They liked it me, you know. Uh, you want to have trouble, don't bother me. Uh, lock, lock me up, they had to lock them up too, you know. Because we Send him to school. I don't count his boys like me so well, and the, and the girl. We all just seemed like sisters and brothers, you know. We never did do no, nobody no harm. We didn't do one another no harm. But I don't know. Sooner or later, we got busted up some kind of way. Did you? Did your father play too? Did he sing? No, my father. He was a crap house man, you know. She dies. Running women, you know, but I never did like that kind of care, you know. And I wanted to do something, you know. I made a lot of whiskey. I never did gamble. 
Because we saw too much of it losing. No, I see too many people get hurt in the gambling, you know. I see a lot of people gambling, you know, and, and lose that hard money, and he turned out to be a desperator, you know what I mean? And I said I, that wasn't no job for me, because gambling is no good for a man, though. When you're gambling, you know, turn your mean, you know, when you're gambling, lose a lot of money. That's right. You ever play around Paducah? Paducah? Paducah, Kentucky? Yeah, you ever around through there? No, I never. I, I, I played in Cairo once or twice, but I never was in Paducah. You think any blues singers ever played around through there? Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Of course, I go through there when I'm going south sometimes different places, but I never had played. As far as I played is Cairo and, and uh, Cardindale and all that, and all around St. Louis and places. <coughs> There's just lots of places through the country I ain't never been. I've never been in Omaha. I was in Kansas City once or twice. And, uh, but when I get up there, I work all the way through, you know. I don't sit down there and hold some woman's hand, you know, and jive some woman, you know what I mean. I didn't come for that. I come to satisfy the people, you know, do the best that I can, you know. I didn't come to get drunk, you know. I drank, but you don't catch me. I stay right. Is this, this your first trip out here to California, or were you out here when you were making records? Well, I was, I, I was, I was down here in World War II at Rice, California, Indio, and um, I didn't come back until they got me to come down here on that film, you know. Hmm. Oh, you you didn't come out here when when that how you know the. How many more days and all that was pretty big? No. Didn't come out no, no, the people wanted me, but you see, the promoters blocked me, you know. Chess and them sent Muddy Water and them out here at that time, you know. Muddy would come all through this country. And see, and I was trying to beg the people to give me a lift, but somehow or another, somebody was, was blocking me, you know. Because they couldn't make no money, as I say. I can't afford to come out here for a small peanut. I'm not smart, you know, but it cost me $1,125 to bring these peoples out here on the plane, see. And that's too hard for me to drive from way out, John, way out here. Is this your only gig on the West Coast, this trip? This trip. See, and then the man, I charged the man $3,500, you see. And, and uh, when I get through, I'll end up making about $800 out of it. See, now you take these men, I have to give them $150 a week, and I have to feed them. I have to sleep them. That comes out of my pocket. You couldn't get a date in L.A. on this trip? Hmm? You couldn't get a date in Los Angeles on this trip? Oh, I may be sold, but uh, I can't. I got I got another week. Yeah, you already booked Yana, they have to. They have to get me back somewhere in... Uh, See, in June the 10th, I'll be in the White House playing in, in, in Washington. Is that right? You're playing the yeah. White House? Well, well see, just like, uh, what, what was that Bali Gray for President Kennedy? Yeah, a festival uh, yeah. for his wife. How was that? What was it, it like? It was wonderful. For? It was wonderful. Did you get to Most people act like, just like you act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're people after all. Yeah, right? people. You know, they if they want to hear the blues, it's not right. It's not all, man. No, no. It's great. I've knocked out that, you know, it's finally happening. Well, you see, I'm going into the White House lawn this time. Yeah, that's in a special section in the paper. Mm, that's for the, the that's for the big the folks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no little people. Ain't no little people gonna be found around that. I was in St. Louis at the time. That's the 10th of June. The mighty wolf played for President Kennedy, you know. Yeah, that's... But, uh... They uh, all over the country, they tried to block me from down this way, you know what I mean? See, because the peoples know I'm a good artist, they know that. And uh, they tried their best to block me out of this area, you know what I mean? But it's too bad now, I done hit this area, I'm gonna make it hard for all the blues singers. 